hello and welcome to Connecting Hawaii Business on ThinkTech Hawaii. My name is Kathleen Lee, owner of Kathleen Lee Consulting, and I am your host for this program. ThinkTech Hawaii is currently live streamed on thinktechhawaii.com as well as on ThinkTech Hawaii's Facebook and YouTube channel. And for viewers out there who are watching us live, you are more than welcome to email us questions to questions at thinktechhawaii.com. For today's show, I am super excited to introduce my friends. We have Lelaine Ignau and Eric Gunding, co-owners of Sama Sama, which is a boba milk tea inspired, oh, Filipino inspired boba milk tea company. Did I get that right? Yes, thank you so much for having us, Kathleen. Of course, yeah, thank, you. thank you, Lelaine and Eric. Lelaine, let's start with you. Tell our viewers about yourself. Yeah, so um, I am the one half of Sama Sama, and outside of that, I'm also a reporter for the Filipino channel, also known as TFC and ABS Figure International, and I'm also the founder of Kusong Filipinex, which is a Filipino market here in Hawaii that supports uh, Filipino small businesses, creatives, and organizations. What about you, Eric? <laughs> yeah, so I'm the other half of Sama Sama. Um, I do own co two clothing businesses. Uh, one is called Breakthrough, which is more geared towards um, mental health awareness. Uh, the second clothing brand is Familiar Wear, which is a Filipino-based clothing brand that the whole entire family can wear. Um, I also do videography and photography on the side as well. Awesome. So before you two um, started Sama Sama, you, you all, both already mentioned that you had entrepreneurial endeavors running separately. Eric, let's start with you. Could you go more into um, what the businesses that you started? And then Lelaine will go over to you as well. Yeah, so I think, <clears throat> I don't know, with me coming out of college, I had an idea of what I wanted to do. But at the same time, it's like seeing my parents and like, most especially seeing my mom doing her side businesses, thing that inspired me to take that leap into like doing my own side hustles and whatnot. Especially starting with the clothing band at first. I think that's where my inspiration came from. And then of course, turning into the boba shop, you know, like, I don't know, I, I think I've always liked the idea of having a business. Sorry, Eric, could you say that last part again? We kind of blanked out, but what you said you always liked the idea of. Oh, I always like the idea of having a business. I don't know, it's just, it's just rewarding to be able to work on your own, your own thing. And then um, it's just exciting and thrilling. Absolutely agree with that. Lelaine, tell us about your entrepreneurial endeavors before Sama Sama came along. So I personally don't think that Kusum Filipinex is essentially an entrepreneurial um, endeavor per se. I feel like I'm more so, um, we act like a nonprofit. I think the business aspect of it is really hosting these small businesses. And for me, it was all about really giving a platform for our Filipino community out here in Hawaii. Um, I know that there's other events, there's other organizations and whatnot, but I feel like there's nothing really geared towards millennials and the next generation. And also have that platform, um, a safe space for people to really showcase their talent as business owners, as creatives, um, their community work. And so that's really where Pusum Filipinex came to life. Um, and actually Pusum Filipinex is the reason why we started Sama Sama. So uh, everything with, that I do is very much so intertwined. That's awesome. So let's let's delve into that before we go into the business. What does Sama Sama mean anyway? Yeah, so it means together, together, like let's join together. And I really wanted it to be a community-based Filipino inspired boba business. Um, with Pusong Filipino X, it really is about building community. And when I saw that we didn't have any drink vendors, we had one at our very first market, but they kept on running out. And I told Eric, I was like, you know what? We, we should start thinking about doing a boba business, uh, especially because I want to start one and have my own when I was in middle school. And I thought, you know what, why not? All these Filipinos 
are doing amazing things with their businesses. They're thriving, they're successful and happy. What's stopping us from starting our own? And so we started planning in 2019. And then it wasn't until 2020 where we really took the leap. And actually this upcoming May 9 is our official one year anniversary. That, that's so cool. Congratulations to both of you. So tell us about the company um, and the food truck. What do you serve? Like, what are the flavors inspired by and all that good stuff. So tell us more. Yeah, Eric, do you want to go ahead and take that one? <laughs> yeah, so for the boba business itself, we want it to be unique in a sense of like, you know, there's so many boba tea shops around the island like i feel like it's on every corner right you you drive by and you see a boba shop and for us we want it to be different um so basically all our syrups we all hand make it ourselves so everything is made fresh with like the real fruit like especially our strawberries or mangoes um we wanted to have that aspect to it you know we didn't want it to be like another boba shop where you know you like you taste the tea and you go to another boba shop and it tastes exactly the same and for us we want to be different in that way and we want to be able to um showcase that to people to our customers that you know we're unique in a sense of everything is made fresh um everything is handcrafted on the spot um yeah and then the link if you want to add more to that yeah, like I mentioned before, Eric and I are very much so, um, I guess you could say we're very, very passionate about our Filipino culture. And so when we started planning Sama Sama, we really wanted it to be around Filipino culture. So to the general eye, when they look at the menu, they're kind of like, how, how is this Filipino? I don't understand. And for those who really understand, there are, uh, we handpick those flavors. So strawberry of course everybody knows what that is but not everyone knows that we have strawberry farms in Baguio and so I want to pay ode to that for example or peach mango we want to pay ode to Jollibee uh, and then of course the toppings that's where it starts to look a little bit more Filipino where we have things like sabot pulaman which is a mix of syrup um, flavorless boba and then jelly or like the hot which is a similar thing but instead of the jelly, we turn it and we add the silken tofu. So things like that. We just want to have a little bit of Filipino here and there. And as we grow as a business, we want to be able to grow our menu as well so that we can continue to educate others about our Filipino culture and our Filipino cuisine. And do you folks collaborate with other vendors as well? I know you mentioned the teas, um, but Lelaine, I think you collaborated with other um, like food vendors before, is that right? Yes, so our starting menu is actually created by Chef Maleko of Minasa, and he's a really good friend of ours. He um, really pushed us throughout our journey of building Sama Sama along with our other food vendor friends. And so with our first uh, iteration of food menu, we had him come in and create a menu for us. And we're hoping for the future to continue the theme of Sama Sama, bringing people together. We want to be able to collaborate with other businesses as well. Let's go over the aesthetic of your truck, which I absolutely love and saw for the first time at Aloha Tower this past weekend. So mm -hmm. you have your, Lilane, you're in the truck right now. Yes. And, you know, if and when people get to see you folks, there's also a rattan chair outside of <laughs> the truck. So tell us more about your inspiration for that. Yeah, I really wanted us to just go all out with showcasing that we're Filipino and I wanted a modern twist to it. So, of course, everybody knows about the rattan. It's very popular right now, but not a lot of people know that it actually originates from different countries in Asia and including the Philippines. And then, of course, if you can see the big um, spoon and the big fork, that's very common in a lot of Filipino households. We just wanted to tie in our Filipino culture and add a little bit of modern twist to it as well. Eric, did you have anything to add to that? And again, I commend both of you for having like great tasting offerings as well as you know beautiful aesthetic for the truck. But anything you wanted to add to what Lelaine had mentioned? Yeah, so for the truck itself, like you know, you see a lot of food trucks on this island. 
and from the get-go we're like if we're putting in money for this food truck we want it to look like the best like we want to make sure we present ourselves to the best of our abilities and um we wanted to showcase it as like a mobile cafe to people you know we didn't want it to be like another food truck that you see rolling around we wanted to take care of every aspect from like what you see on the outside especially with the neon light or the our copy shell light uh the red hand share that's something you don't really see with other food trucks you know we want it to be interactive with people you know when you come to our food truck we wanted to create an experience for you you know like we want to allow you to take pictures with your food or drink we want you to be able to sit down you know under the neon sign and we've seen that through um the events that we've been doing and like when especially when you look inside like you want to give off that cafe vibe you know like you don't really see it with other food trucks you just see like normally you just see you know like a silver wall with a lot of equipment and whatnot and like you know this that's not something that we wanted to do we wanted to stand out and be different and like basically change the game on this island with food trucks and you guys have done if that is your goal you have accomplished it through and through so we are going to go on <laughs> break but when we return i'd love to ask you two more about the business or in challenges clientele and demographic um, and all that so we will be right back Welcome back to Connecting Hawaii Business on Think Tech Hawaii. Our guests today are Lelaine Ignau and Eric Gunding of Sama Sama. And when we last left off, we were talking about how their food food truck stood out. So Lelaine, let's let's start with you. Well not start, obviously. Let's continue with you. Walk us through the process of starting up a food truck business. You know, Kathleen, to be honest, I was more so just trying to keep us on budget. And um, I'll be quite frank, I only did the cute stuff. So I think Eric really has to take this one. He <laughs> knows the ins and outs of that whole experience. So we credit you for the, the beautiful yes. uh, backdrop there. And yes, again, <laughs> the looks of it. So Eric, as, as Lelaine had mentioned, Tell us about the nitty gritty of starting a food truck business. It's honestly hard. It's not, it's not really that easy. You know, if you talk to anyone who has a food truck, like it costs a lot of money. So I think first and foremost, have the budget, um, know exactly what you need inside. And of course, um, there are things that you may need, you may not need in the end, but I think you just need to be concise with your equipment first and foremost. Um, also know who you're working with, you know, uh, especially with this food truck, like it's it's very hard to trust people, um, especially with all these high ticketed items, like all these refrigerators, all these restaurant equipment and whatnot. So you need to be able to trust the person that you're working with. And you need to be able to um, understand too, like how the equipment works, like which equipment is best. Like you don't, you don't want to be jipped at the end of the day, with, especially with spending so much money on it. That is very good to know um for our viewers out there who may want to take on that endeavor what are some well actually let's let, let me take it back what is the demographic that you two have um discovered as far as your clientele goes it really just ranges from 
teenagers and kids to families than adults. It really just depends on where we pop up just because for us, we, you know, living in Hawaii is not cheap at all. So for us, the hustle's real. Any pop-up we can get, any opportunity we can get to put our name out there and share our culture and the boba uh, business with, we will take it. So it ranges from, for the most part, families, teenagers, uh, young adults. And you started this, you had mentioned earlier that you started this last year since you are coming up on your one year anniversary for Sama Sama. So congratulations to you both. I think that is a great accomplishment. What are some challenges that you ran into starting up in the midst of COVID? I think the biggest thing was trying to figure out, can we handle it financially? Because we were in such an interesting time of our lives. And I'll be honest, like we have a lot of student loan debt that we're dealing with still. And so it was trying to figure out, do we take the leap or not? And I think with everything going on with COVID, everyone was just trying to figure out ways to make money. And at that time, it was kind of more like, okay, it's now or never. Because if we don't do it now, when will we? So I think it's just really trying to take that big leap. It's just do it and not be perfect. And then figure out as you go. I think as you just take that first step, the details will come in as you go and work on it more and more. I absolutely agree with that, Lelaine. Done is better than perfect, right? Yeah. So start somewhere, start anywhere. What are some uh, interesting experiences that you two have ex you know, gone through so far since uh, the food truck, food truck business came up? I think the shortage uh, has been a huge thing. Uh, I know there have been times where our cups or our lids have run out because shipment hasn't come in yet. So we try to figure out what cups do we use now? What lids? Uh, there were times where we forgot our straws. So people had to go lidless or even the boba shortage was right before we started our business. So we were ready to say, okay, we're just going to make boba from scratch ready. But thankfully, we haven't had to do that just yet, except for our special, our national tapioca day last year. Uh, so it's, it's a lot. I think it's definitely a learning process uh, with everything, but I mean, what else, what else can we expect with running a business? I think it's a blessing though, that we get to learn these new opportunities, these experiences, gain these lessons. And so yeah, for sure. Well, a central part of your business revolves around representing the Filipino culture. Um, what is the importance of that? The importance or significance of representing the Filipino culture through everything that the food truck embodies. So Eric, let's start with you. I think for us, it's very important. You know, at, like, at the end of the day, like we can't change who we are. Um, growing up here, especially just a little background, like, you know, I grew up ashamed of being Filipino. I feel like that goes for a lot of people here, especially getting teased in elementary school or just teased for what you eat, what you drink, how you speak. And, you know, it wasn't until Pusong or until Elaine that, you know, I got re-inspired to be like, you know, I'm Filipino, we're all Filipino, like, we, we need to just be proud of it. You know, we can't change that at the end of the day. Like, we can't embody anything else but be a Filipino. And with the food truck and the business itself, we want to be able to showcase that to people, you know, like when people see our menu, they get surprised when they see like calamansi or like the hole on it or like hollow hollow, they get all excited, you know, and the food aspect, drink aspect, that's what we want to be able to showcase to people, you know, like this is my culture. This is something I need, I should be proud of. And like, this is something that can be seen and we want to be able to showcase to like Filipino, Filipino cuisine is always going to be here to stay, no matter what. And you know, it's it's finally time for us to showcase to the entire world that Filipinos are here. So. What about you, Elaine? I have to agree with Eric. I think for me, it was definitely just trying to put ourselves on the map and provide representation for our Filipino culture, especially through our food, because not everyone knows what Filipino food is all about. Not everyone attracted 
um, or crave Filipino food on a regular basis. So I really wanted us to change that and slowly introduce it through boba and eventually through dessert and food. I mentioned this earlier during our break, but I love watching the dynamic between you two because you seem to work really well together. What is it like being business partners as well as life partners? And again, congratulations on your engagement. I know you guys are set to make it official at the close to the end of the year, but tell us more about like that dynamic. You want to start? <laughs> I think, to be honest, I don't know, we just bounce off of each other well. You know, when it comes to business, when it comes to, like, we were able to know when to separate business from, like, our relationship. And I think that's important to us because, and for the most part, we're in sync. It's crazy. Like, some things that she thinks of, I'm already thinking myself. You know, or, like, some ideas I already had, she's already thinking of it. So it's, I I think it's just crazy that, you know, we're we're just that in sync with each other. Yes, I have to agree just because um, if you, I mean, of course, Kathleen, you know us personally, but people who know us personally, they know that we're opposites. Uh, I'm the more introvert, uh, extrovert and Eric's the more of the introvert. And so as a relationship, of course, opposites attract. And of course, we're going to still have our issues or we'll bump heads from time to time. But Knock on wood, when it comes to Sama Sama, like Eric said, we're we're so in sync. I'm I'm so blessed and grateful to have Eric as my life partner and business partner and that it works out so well with Sama Sama. Just our life. I love it. I absolutely love it. Is there anything else you two would like to add since we have a few minutes left? Eric? Yeah. Um Please go ahead and follow us on Sama, uh, on Instagram at Sama Sama T. Uh, look out for our May schedule. Uh, we're in for a busy month, definitely. So um, we hope to see you all there at one of our pop-ups. Yeah. What are the um, L L Lane, What are some upcoming events that you guys have within the next week or so? Yes. So it is Teacher Appreciation Week this week. So we have been collaborating with some schools. Um, providing boba to the teachers as a little thank you for them and so we have an event tomorrow at one of the schools on, in Kapolei and then on Friday we have May Day celebration at Farrington High School from 4 30 to 9 30. On Saturday we have a double event. Uh, we have Mother's Day Makeke at Eva, no, Dream House at the beach um, from 9 to 1, and then another Teachers Appreciation event at Campbell High School from 4 to 8. Awesome. Oh, it looks like we have a couple more minutes to spare. So what is, from each of you, what is one lesson learned that you would like to share with viewers out there, especially people who may want to start up a small business or a big business, either way? I would um, say, okay. I would say just go for it. Um, what I would do all the time, because essentially it took us two years to really get ourselves to just go out there and do it. So in those two years, we were just constantly brainstorming any ideas that came to mind. We would put it on our notes, on Google Drive. And then um, it wasn't until the last six months that we really went in and figured out, okay, where do we get our supplies from? what um what are the recipes for our syrups what is the recipe for the drink how do we go about this and so i think we're super grateful that we were able to have personal food connect and then of course eric's two clothing brands and his uh, media program his media uh, business that it helped us also learn some business I, business lessons along the way and that we could put it into some mama but i say just really plan out but don't over plan it because you might break yourself out i think when you know that it's becoming too much just go for it go from there i like that what about you eric yeah pretty much just echoing the lane um to be honest life is just short you know could be here to get today gone tomorrow basically my rule of thumb is is if you have it already in your head it's already in someone else's head too so you might as well jump on it while you still can and make the most out of it too. Definitely. 
Wonderful. Let's pull up your Instagram and how can people find you folks here? Uh, what is your handle? So Sama Sama T for Instagram and Facebook. I believe TikTok as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you, Eric and Lelaine for joining us today and for talking about your company. And thank you to the entire staff at Think Tech Hawaii as well, to Jay Fidel and the folks who make this happen. We had Michael and Haley who helped us out today. Until next time, aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.